Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis. And as always, first I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Now in today's part 37, we will talk about the uniform convergence for differentiable functions. For this, please recall what we already know about the uniform convergence. It applies to a sequence of functions fn with the common domain i. Then we can have a limit function we simply call f. Now the short formulation for the uniform convergence we've already learned is given by the supremum norm. So the supremum norm of fn minus f goes to zero when n goes to infinity. Indeed, this is a very strong property a sequence of functions can have and as we discussed it before, we already know it conserves continuity. This is an important fact you really should remember. In short, if we have that all the fn are continuous and we have the uniform convergence, then the limit function f is also continuous. And if you want to see a proof, you can watch part 31 again. In this video here, we don't talk about the property continuity, but rather about the new property differentiability. Therefore, we first need a new definition to make this pointwise property to a global property. It works exactly the same as for the continuity. We call a function f simply differentiable if f is differentiable at all points x0 in the given domain i. Now, in this case, when we have this, we can easily define a new function we call f prime. For the definition, we simply map each point x in the domain i to the derivative at this given point. And of course, we also call this new function simply the derivative of f. Later, we will have a lot of examples for derivatives, but maybe here, let's recall what we already know. So if we have a linear polynomial, maybe given by 4 times x plus 5, then we know it's differentiable everywhere. And we know the derivative function f prime is given by the constant function with constant 4. Of course, the important fact here is that we get immediately a new function f prime with the same domain as the original function. Okay, then when we have a whole sequence of such functions, we can ask what happens in the uniform convergence. And that's what we now formulate in a nice theorem. First, what we put in is that we have a sequence of functions fn with the domain i. Okay, now let's collect some assumptions we want for this sequence here. Of course, as promised, we want to talk about differentiable functions, so all the functions in the sequence should be differentiable. And then the uniform convergence comes in when we say that the derivatives fn prime are uniformly convergent to a function g. Then, in this case, a natural question would be, is the original function fn also uniformly convergent to a limit function f? In general, I can tell you this is not true, we need one additional assumption. In fact, it's sufficient when we have that the function is pointwisely convergent to a limit function f. Here please recall, pointwise convergence is a much weaker condition than the uniform convergence. Then, of course, the conclusion here is, now we have the uniform convergence. However, more importantly, we also have that the limit function f is differentiable as well. And when we calculate the derivative, we get out the function g. Okay, so you see, this is the whole theorem and it is very nice because it tells us that under these conditions here, differentiability is conserved. Therefore, I would say, let's use the next minutes to prove this theorem. Here the overall goal would be to calculate the derivative of f. Hence we fix any point x0 from the domain i and then we look at the difference quotient of f at this point. This means we have this number for a point x which is not x0. Now we already know what we want, namely when we send x to x0, what comes out here is exactly g at x0. Hence, let's subtract it and let's see if we can make this number here as small as we want. And maybe you can already guess, what we need here is the triangle inequality for the absolute value. Now in order to apply it, we have to add suitable terms in the middle. For example, to get an estimate here, we can use the difference quotient of the function fn. However, if we don't want to change the whole equation, we have to add this difference quotient again. Now, since we look at the difference quotient of fn, it might also be useful to include the derivative of fn. However, of course, as before, we have to add it again, otherwise we would change the equality. 
Okay, now at this point we can split up the whole expression here into three parts. But then of course the triangle inequality tells us that the left hand side is now less or equal than the right hand side. Indeed, with this we are almost finished, we just have to make these three parts as small as we want. Let's do this very quickly, because you should immediately see when n goes to infinity, this number here goes to zero by assumption. On the other hand, the second term goes to zero when x goes to x zero. Therefore, only the first part here could make any problems. And indeed, in order to keep this part small enough, we need the uniform convergence of the derivatives. So we are not able to omit the third assumption here to get the nice result that the limit function is also differentiable. Now I don't want to show you all the details for this proof here, because later it's much better to understand when we have the mean value theorem. In summary, you should just see that for a given epsilon, we can keep this number smaller than epsilon. More concretely, for any epsilon greater than zero, we get that the limit minus g of x zero in the absolute value is less or equal than epsilon. And this always means that the only possibility is that this number here is zero. Hence, this limit is exactly g of x zero, so f is differentiable with f prime is equal to g. Okay, I think that's good enough for the idea of the proof. The important thing is that you remember this statement here. Because I immediately want to use it in the next video for functions given by power series. This means that we get a lot of examples for derivatives and that we can calculate them. Therefore, I really hope I see you in this next important video. Have a nice day and bye.